In this section, we're going to talk about how a service can return collections of items back to a client. In the cloud, collections can be very large. And a, client, a service can't return multiple gigabytes within a single response. And a client also can't really process multiple gigabytes in a single response. And so what typically happens is that the service breaks the collection up into pages. The service returns the first page of the collection, the client processes that page of the collection, and then if the client wants to, the client can go back to the service to get the second page of the collection, and so on and so forth. Um, also note that while a client is processing a page of a collection, other clients may be mutating or modifying that collection. So that means that the collection can be changing while a client is paging over the items. It is critically important that you document for your service that certain items may end up being skipped or duplicated because of this happening. And that the client code should be written robustly enough to be able to handle these scenarios properly where items are missing or where items are duplicated. Now, there's two kinds of paging. There's server-driven paging and there's client-driven paging, and actually both of them can be used together. They're not mutually exclusive. Server-driven paging, paging allows the service to protect itself. Right? It's a multi-tenant service, has many clients that are acting on that service, and it can't spend all of its time iterating over items, sorting items, and so on to return it back for a single client. Right? Its resources have to be shared by multiple clients. So a service tends to grab some of the items in the collection, return those, and then the client can come back to the service to go and get additional items if the client chooses to do that, and the client may never come back to the service. And that should be okay too. The server should be unaffected by that. It should have a, nothing bad should happen because of it. Um, it is highly recommended that if your service has an operation that returns a collection, it's highly recommended that you support server-driven paging today because there's a breaking change to introduce it later in the future. For example, let's say that today you have an operation and you think, well, there's only ever going to be at most a thousand items in this collection. So when a client makes a request to me, I'm just going to give it the thousand items. Well, if in the future you change your implementation of the service and now it could have 10,000 or 100,000 or a million items that are in there, then you want to go and change it to be paging. Well, the client code that was already written against the first version of your service, it doesn't know that you support paging now, right? That you've added paging support. So it thinks that when it makes a request to the service, the service is returning all the results, not a page of results. That client code would have to be modified in order to loop around to support paging and that forcing the client code to modify to support that is a breaking change. So you can ignore server side paging if you know that the collection is always of a reasonable size and you have to decide what reasonable is for your service. Um, some people use kind of a rule of thumb as if the service doesn't return more than maybe eight megabytes or maybe 100 megabytes in the payload, then if you know it's never going to be beyond that, then um, you don't have to support paging. But if you think there's a chance it could grow beyond that, then support paging today. Don't add it in the future later as that's a breaking change. Client-driven paging allows the client to request specific ranges of a collection. For example, a client that wants to process a thousand items at a time might make a first request to a service to say, well, I want to go and get some items from the collection, skip the first zero items, that means don't skip any, of course, and then return to me the top 1,000 items in that collection. Then the client can go and process those items. Then the client can go back to the service and say, all right, now service, I want items from that same collection, but now I want to skip over the first thousand because I processed them already, but I still want to get the next 1000 after that. And then the service goes and returns that set. And then if the client wants to do more, it could say to the service, make another request, say skip the first 2000 and now give me the next 1000 and so on and so forth until the service eventually returns back and says, well, I know you wanted a thousand, but there was only 500 here. And then the client can say, oh, well, that just means I've reached the end of the collection and then it can just stop. And as I mentioned earlier, it's actually common for services to support both uh, 
server-driven paging as well as client-driven paging. Um, a server usually does server-driven because it needs to manage its cost of goods and the managing of the service. Client-driven paging is more for the clients, so they might have even greater restrictions above the server pager driven server-driven paging, they might have even stricter requirements about the information that they get back. On this slide here, I show a, or demonstrate a paging request and its response. In the top left, this is a get operation. That's usually how we return a collection. The URL is to a collections resource. In this case, my example is using slash products. And then if you support some other options, there can be some additional query options there. Azure um, kind of uses OData for this, but it's not necessarily strict OData. So we've kind of modeled it after standard OData things. So if you want to look up OData and query options that are available there, we largely mimic that to a large extent. Some Azure services will use the dollar sign in front of filter or order by or skip or top. Some Azure services will not because it's not true O data and the dollar sign kind of gives a feeling to customers that this is a true O data, um, you know, order by or filter operation. I'll talk about the query options more in just a moment. Um, so then once the client does a get request against the collection, the service responds with a HTTP response and inside the JSON payload, there should be a field, a JSON object that contains a field called value. And the value of the value field is an array of objects or JSON objects. Here I'm showing just brace dot 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 brace for item zero, item one, and if there were more items, they would appear in this value array. If the service uh, has just returned whatever its maximum number of items that it returns is in that value array, then the service would also include in the JSON payload a next link field. And the value of the next link field is some opaque URL that the client should do another get operation to in order to get the next page. So the service would specify, here's the actual URL, which could have query parameters in it if the service desires. It's an opaque URL from the client's perspective. So it's just a URL that comes back to the client. The client should do a get request against this next link value. And that would go and return another payload that looks just like this with a JSON object, with a value field, with another array, with the next page of items, and possibly another next link at the end to go and get the next page. If the service has returned the final page of the collection, then in the response, the next link field would not be there. It would be missing. And so if a client sees there's no next link field in the JSON response, then the client knows it should not do a get. It has completed iterating over all the items inside the collection. Now let's talk about the query options. Some services support this, queries options. Some services do not support it. Um, as I said, we kind of model them in Azure over on the OData specifications. You can find out more information there. And what's typical for query operations are things like filter, order by, skip, and top. That's how we implement the client-driven paging that I mentioned on the previous slide. Max page size, a client can say to a service, well, the service never returns more than 10,000 items, but I actually never want more than 1,000 back. So the client can specify a max page size of, well, I said 1,000, but my example on the slide has 500. And then the service should not return more than this. If the client specifies a max page size of, let's say, 5 million, the service may still restrict itself to only returning 10,000. And so this max page size is the maximum that the client is willing to accept, but the service may actually give the client less than this. Uh, and then there's other query operations like select and expand in order to you know, pull certain fields out so not the entire record comes out of the resource or expand might be to, uh, to expand subsections in adjacent object to give more information. So those control what information is coming back over the wire. Um, again, some services you know, offer some of these, some don't offer some of them. You know, it, it's up to the service itself what makes sense. For things like filtering over a collection, it, usually the query, the, the value of the query parameter is something like the name of some field and then some operator like equals and then some value like milk. And you can put some Boolean uh, logical operations in there rather like and or or. And then so this is saying go to the collection and return every product to me where the name is equal to milk and the price is less than $10. 
Um, on the far right, I show a table here of the filter precedence. So if you support filters, it's common to support parentheses. Um, or the not operator, uh, greater than, uh, yeah, greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, less than, equal to, equal to, not equal to, and an or. And that's the typical order of precedence that customers should expect when calling your service that you honor that order. Um, below the first table, the wider table, I have this evaluation order section here. Um, it is critical that services honor these query options in this specific order. That is, the service should be applying the filter operation first to the items in the collection. Then if order by is specified, then it would honor the order by next to sort those things. Then if skip is specified, it would skip over that many of things. And then if top is specified, it would return the top so many of those things. And that order must be followed for any of the operations that your service supports. Uh, one other note I'd like to point out is that the order by operation is very, very expensive for a service to implement. And the reason is because in order to sort everything, you have to look at everything and then you have to order them. Well, if the collection is very large, the service may be spending a lot of time loading the entire collection into memory so that it can sort that collection and then return a page. And then if the client comes back to get the next page, well, that next request might go through a load balancer that hits a different node of the service. So that new node might have to get all the collection again, sort it, apply a filtering to it and everything else to it, and then return the second page back to the client. Again, that's very expensive. So many services do not support order by because the cost of goods and what's required in resources to run that service is very expensive. 